Hi everyone, I'm Taylor Barnett. I'm an organizer from Hack Texas. Uh, so I wanna start off by giving some context why we're even having this conversation and uh, also to explain that people have different perspectives from where they come from, ethnicity, their gender, all different experiences that they've had in their life, how old they are, uh, you know, marital status, all different places. And so we want to bring more of these perspectives to a hackathon. And so it makes better teams, it makes better uh, product ideas, it makes better design, and it also helps bring intersectionality to different uh, projects. And uh, so definitely, we all know that there's inequalities in tech, that we don't represent in hackathons the number of percentage women that are even in computer science departments and in some jobs, you know, it's in certain areas. And so one of ex my experiences, the first Hack Texas had 4% women. And I looked around the room, I wasn't a lead organizer, but I looked around the room and I was really sad. Like that was not, I felt, I felt like I let women down. And so the next year I was like, okay, I'm gonna do something about this. So, that's actually supposed to be 2013. But in Hack Texas this year, well, 2013, we had about 10% women. Some of the things that we did were I went out to the Women Computer Science Group and uh, women in software engineering, and I gave talks at their meetings. And I was asked to be at the end of the meeting because I wanted to be able, after I answered their questions and explain, you know, make sure they understand what a hackathon really is. Because, you know, sometimes there's some bad things out there that just need to be clarified. Um, explain that it's a learning experience, that they don't have to, you know, be in it to win first place. And that they should feel welcome there. And it definitely resulted in more uh, women signing up actually right after those meetings. Because I tracked uh, how many were signing up that next day or two. And in the numbers, and then I also tracked to see how many of those women that I talked to actually actually came to the uh, hackathon and there were very high rates of them coming. And so I'm gonna hand it off to uh, Katie, talk about the barriers of entry to hackathons. Um, all right, so uh, from talking to various people, my friends, people from other schools, trying to, to go to hackathons, um, I have encountered four main barriers to entry. The first one is self-confidence. So a lot of women and a lot of minorities, I don't want to restrict it to women, um, have this perception that they're not legit enough to go to a hackathon. Um, and, and I've heard this from many of my friends who are women in CS. Um, I recently tried to push for a lot of women to go to pen apps and to apply, and the initial reaction, like 50% of the time was, I don't know anything. These are women that have gone through software dev classes at MIT, done very well, put together, they're more than capable of creating an app over a weekend or learning how to create a website, and yet, they lack the self-confidence to believe that they can go to a hackathon and, and be on par with all of the male hackers that are there. Um, and I think that leads into my next point, which is unfamiliarity. A lot of women who go off to hackathons aren't going with a group of friends. Um, I feel like that's not the case with a lot of guys. You all go off in your group of hackers. Everyone kind of goes off in their little, you know, every, everyone kind of goes off as one solid group. And then you have women who may not know uh, or hang out with the group of guys that go off to the hackathon together and feel like they're kind of tagging along or feel like they can't uh, work with these people who have gone to multiple hackathons already or have been coding for a while or even if they haven't been coding for a while, just like feeling like they are not part of the group as a whole but instead tagging along. Um, and I think that uh, a way to fix this would be to be what we're doing right now, um, and Tess and Taylor have been 
really great in doing this and kind of raising, and Amy, have, and uh, raising awareness of other females that are going to hackathons um, kind of leads me to my next point. Uh, one of the most difficult things to do when you are a female going to a hackathon is finding people to work with. Um, a lot of guys go to hackathons, they already have their teams all picked out or naturally form teams that want to work together. Uh, you really have to go with a group of friends uh, in order to be able to kind of naturally form this team and, and that's way less likely if you're a female in CS going with a group of already, you know, formed, an already formed group of friends. Um, I think, so, so we've, we've kind of discussed this and uh, something that's actually worked uh, for me with the Penapps bus and group was to, uh, um, something that worked was to kind of um, administrate the team matching process. Uh, for some reason, a lot of girls lack the self-confidence to say that I'm good at this. Or I, like my strength is this one area and I am actually good. Uh, for whatever reason. And, and administrating the, the team matching process through a separate kind of, uh, I, I used a Google form, very simple, and found that people are much more comfortable not kind of blasting it out to the Facebook group, but actually just like filling out a form saying like, I have this much experience and I, have, I can do this. And then having someone else um, do the team matching for them. And, and that was effective and a lot of people want teams. A lot, of people, a lot of people want to be matched with other people to work with because they don't know enough people to, like, on their own. And, and, and having someone that they know um, be able to make that introduction has been very effective. And then my fourth point is hearing about the event too late. So everyone in this room is kind of in the hackathon network. But most girls who are perhaps, would perhaps think about going to this event are not, and that, that are not currently going to these events are not in this circle. So how do we publicize hackathons? We blast it out on Facebook. We, for Hack MIT, we did a huge network of Facebook ads. But who do, these, who, who do these notifications reach? They reach people who are already established in the circle. And so it kind of runs into this self-perpetuating problem where the people who hear about it are the people who are already gonna go, or the people who are already in this like hackathon attending circle, and that has a low percentage of girls. Um, and by the time they hear about it, the deadline to apply is passed, all the tickets are sold out, and they're like, well, this is great, I would potentially be interested in going to this event, checking it out, but there's no way I can go now because I didn't hear about this event until you know three weeks before when publicity started ramping up. Um, so, Dave talked about this earlier, opening up tickets, which, um, you know, the, the um, publicity is something that uh, I think Tess or Amalia is going to talk about, but what happened was it was effective because girls had not heard about the event, and by the time they heard about the event, uh, the tickets were sold out. So publicity is something that we can all work on. Um, and now I'm going to pass it off to Tess, who's going to talk about her experiences. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so I'm just going to talk. Um, yeah, that said, I want to take a minute just to talk about communication and sort of messaging around hackathons, uh, specifically for women. Uh, the bottom line here is that you want people to feel like hackathons are for them, um, which means that you, I see Dave nodding in the front row, he's like, hackathons are for everybody. Um, <laughs> um, you want people to be able to visualize themselves at your event. Um, so that means you have to think about what you're communicating indirectly. Um, if you are on some level making it sound like your hackathon requires some huge technical feat, some amazing mountain of knowledge, you're gonna end up inadvertently excluding a lot of people who feel like they don't fit into that category. And this kind of goes back to what Katie was saying about women maybe being a little bit less willing to say, hey, I'm great at this thing, but that's, that's going to disproportionately um, exclude women. Visibility matters 
so much with your with your marketing materials, with the the stories you tell. Um, if you have only guys, I mean, it's like nobody's like, oh, there's only guys on this poster, so I can't go. Nobody's saying that consciously, but they might be saying that subconsciously. Um, visibility matters so much as well with your mentors and judges. Make sure you have mentors and judges who are women. Make sure you have mentors and judges who are people of color. Um, even better, make sure you have mentors and judges who aren't strictly, strictly technical. Have mentors and judges who are designers, uh, data scientists, people with different backgrounds. Um, uh, relatedly, language etiquette. Uh, words like rock star or ninja tend to be uh, gendered a little bit male. Um, even the word guys, which is like really gender neutral. So, so someone uh, did a survey recently. Uh, and in a lot of contexts, it's totally gender neutral. But when you put it in the context of especially so like the third graph, the fourth graph, and the uh, sixth graph are, <laughs> um, when you put the word guys with like a technical, with like a language, um, women are twice as likely as men to see that word as gendered. So just like, there's all kinds of stuff like that um, where, you know, it can be like subtly gendered and maybe you're not really thinking about it, but, but people do see that. Um, <laughs> Alexei is like losing it in the front row. Yeah, can you read that? Um, which one do you want me to read? All of them. Okay, okay. So, so the first one says, uh, "Hi, guys. Hi, 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 guys. H
questions you won't like the answers to. Questions that once you get the answers, acting on those answers is going to be difficult. Um, and even if you don't like the answers you receive, you need to go out and ask for that feedback because people aren't going to be blunt and open about why they didn't come or like why their friends didn't come. So getting that feedback, like pursuing that feedback is very important. And you actually need to listen to what they say because no one size is going to fit all people. Um, this goes back into the idea that, yes, we're up here speaking for women in tech, but we, we're not a hive mind. Like women are not, we don't, we don't all like clue into like the anthill. There isn't like one queen. Um, and this is the same for any group, right? So you need to listen to people in your specific community because whatever the problem is with pen apps, the reason like women at Penn won't attend hackathons, is not going to be the same as the reason that women at U Texas or like MIT or any of these other schools aren't coming. Um, and that goes doubly for the fact that there are going to be certain things that disproportionately affect you. There are things like holidays. For example, that this event, for example, conflicts with Lunar New Year. I'm sure we could imagine that like certain people had to make the decision, am I going to go home for Lunar New Year or am I going to go to this convention? You want to make sure that your hackathon doesn't have any of those. If you don't want to schedule at the same time as Sorority Rush, you don't want to schedule at the same time as Pride Week, you, don't want, to, you want to make sure that if people have certain food considerations, they're able to go to your hackathon, they don't have to worry, how am I going to eat and still like honor whatever um, like agreement I've made? And there are a lot of issues like that, this that will come up with different groups, and you just need to be conscious of them. You need to go out and say, is my website e-reader accessible? Can I get someone from my university's like um, sign language translation to come if that's necessary? And the most important thing is safety. So I think we've um, we've been mostly lucky in college hackathons that we have not yet had a problematic incident that got a lot of press. This is not going to continue. Um, if you look at any sufficiently large group, I, the, like, for example, in the, I'm in the open source community. In the open source community, there have been, like, literally litanies of things that have happened, especially when events get large. And there are these abuses, and you need to think about how am I going to protect the safety of the people coming to my hackathon. And specifically, a code of conduct is a great way to do that. How many of you are involved with hackathon organization? Can I get a show of hands? <laughs> awesome! How many of you are involved in hackathon organizations where your hackathon has a code of conduct? Right, that's not good. So this is actually something that we can really easily change and there's actually this great open source code of conduct that is on GitHub. It's, let me pull it up. And this is more of a jumping off point than anything, but Yes, the TLDR is don't be a jerk, but the basic idea is that a, <laughs> this, like, a, adopting a code of conduct may not seem like a big step, but it's the sort of thing that A, shows a message to your potential participants that you care about their problems and you care enough about them to do something about it, and it also gives you the teeth when something goes wrong to act about it. Like, so if something goes wrong, you can use your code of conduct to jump off. And as a side note, there are several organizations that will only sponsor events that have codes of conduct. For example, the Python Software Foundation and the Django Software Foundation, I know off the top of my head, will no longer sponsor events that do not have a code of conduct. So from a, um, just a perspective of I want more sponsors, you should also be taking this into account. 